As the friendly city glows in the light of the setting sun, you feel that it was always intended for Austin to be your permanent home. I've always kind of viewed history as, it's like a tapestry with a lot of little threads. And each of those threads, those are little stories. And if you remove those threads, you lose the tapestry. We need all those threads and we need all those stories so that current and future generations can understand what Austin was, is, and will be in the future. And we need a place to save that history. I'm Mike Miller, the manager of the Austin History Center. The Austin History Center is the local history division of the Austin Public Library, and we preserve the history of Austin and Travis County. We have some really fun and interesting things here. Letters, diaries, records, photographs, maps, books, video, audio, oral histories. This is a record of arrests. You have someone arrested for fast riding. And that's not fast riding as in riding, it was fast riding, so they were speeding on their horse through town. What the public sees when they come in is only about 2% of our collections. Let's go take a look behind the scenes. We're in the O'Henry Room, where we store one of the largest O'Henry collections in the country. O'Henry is one of America's uh, most well-known short story writers, and he lived here as William Sidney Porter, and he was working for the First National Bank in Austin as a bank teller. He was indicted and convicted of embezzlement and sent to the Federal Penitentiary in Columbus, Ohio, where he started his short story writing and adopted his pen name, O'Henry. Truth in these strange of fiction. All of my stories are actual experiences that I've come across during my travels. This is the only recording of O'Henry's voice. So now we're in the mayor's room. This used to be a public space, but we had to convert it into offices for our community archivist program. Hi Esther, what are you working on today? I am working on the first Vietnamese American newspaper. It is really amazing to read about when the Vietnamese first came here um, after the fall of Saigon and the lives that they had to reconstruct, you know, in this new and strange land. We have three community archivists who go out into the field and work with the Mexican American, African American, and Asian American communities to make sure that their stories are preserved. This is where we store over 35,000 drawings of buildings throughout Austin or buildings representing the work of noted Austin architects. And one of my favorites I'm going to show you now is the working drawings that they used when they built the Travis County Courthouse. It's almost like a piece of art in and of itself. The History Center building served as the first public library building for the city of Austin. The public library is a standing invitation in itself to the entire family. Membership cards are a mere formality. In the 1980s when they built a new library, this building was almost demolished, but a group of citizens banded together to save it and restore it as the Austin History Center. And so now we're in our break room where we have our morning coffee or our lunch. And as you can see, we're so cramped for space in this building that we have to store collections in this room uh, as well as take our breaks. And this is the room where we store the papers of Governor Pease. These boxes here were set out to be picked up by the trash pickup in the 40s. A young boy who had an agreement with the garbage truck driver paid uh, about a dime for this big steamer trunk. And we ended up getting them about 75 years later. One of my favorites that was in this collection was a letter that he wrote right before they moved into their house woodlawn, and Governor Peace was very excited that they were going to have indoor plumbing, uh, and he even drew a picture on the letter showing where the bathroom was going to be inside the house, and that was a big deal in the 1850s. One of our favorite collections and the most popular collections is our photographs. We have uh, well over a million photographs here at the History Center. This is a, an image of the Capitol with a tornado. It looks like it's going to take out the Capitol, but it really wasn't that close. The Capitol survived, and uh, we have this great photograph. So one of the really cool things that we do here at the History Center is we build exhibits to display and celebrate Austin's history and to get more of the materials in these back stacks out to the public. Oh, Steve. Hey, Steve. Hi. What are we working on today? We're doing a series of photographs of the old bookmobiles from the Austin Public Library. These are voice recordings of Austinites. These are really important 
a lot of people have not left a written record behind, and so to understand their history and their story, uh, we have to rely on uh, an oral tradition and an oral record. One of our more famous and kind of interesting stories is an interview that was done of Ann Richards. So I got a telephone call from a friend of mine that said that she had this young woman who wanted to run for office. And would I look at her and talk with her? I said I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. We have about 50,000 square feet of materials in this building, and this building is only 33,000 square feet. We're waiting for our roof to pop and papers to just go fluttering out. These are some of our favorite uh, pieces. This is the suicide letter that Whitman wrote the night before he went up into the tower and, and started his shootings. A Marine veteran who was an expert marksman shot and killed 10 unsuspecting noontime strollers on the University of Texas campus today. And you can see it's both typed and handwritten. He went back and finished the letter in longhand after he killed his wife. All right, and now for my favorite place to work during the summer, it's our cold storage vault. This is where we protect photographic negatives and moving picture images. And so this is our inner vault. This is where we store nitrate negatives. Nitrate uh, can spontaneously combust if uh, too warm. Uh, this is why a lot of movie houses in the 20s burn down. So now we're in our uh, video archives area. We have well over 30,000 hours of video. We have a dedicated video archivist to help us process these materials. Tim, what are you working on today? I'm working on an, a documentary on the Armadillo World Headquarters. That was a world famous club here in Austin. The famous first flight of Trans Armadillo Airways made of two giant enchiladas. So this is important work uh, for uh, documentary filmmakers that might want to use this footage in the future? It sure is, because we've had several over the last few years. It's important to preserve it. Yeah. Uh, later they used burritos because they found that the, uh, the contents would spill out from the end of the enchiladas. Follow me. To kind of turn sideways. We have to get very creative with, with how we fit things and constantly shifting things around just trying to make room. So we're coming to the end of the tour uh, and also the end of our stacks that we have to acquire new materials for the collections. And as you can see, we have just a few uh, ranges of empty shelves. It won't take much to fill up these shelves uh, and then we'll be trying to decide what to do next on how to save Austin's history. The Austin of today is definitely not the Austin of when it was founded. More than 100 people are moving here every day. So when you have that much change happening that rapidly, you also have that much history being created. And we need to save that history to hold the fabric of our community together.